Despite hesitating to watch Jujutsu Kaisen season 2 because I had a lack of emotional connection with season 1, I'm watching it. I'm watching season 2. I love the animation, the action, and the plot twists. And one character I really do enjoy to watch is Megumi, Fushiguro Megumi. And Konoyatsu wa Squishy edgy. Do you know what I mean? Squishy edgy. Like edgy, you know, emo kind of esque. But the thing is, I don't think that he's an edge lord. You know, he gives me chill vibes, you know, kinda like, yeah, I'll just get this stuff done. Especially in season one, you know. And then when he was a child in the flashbacks, he was kinda edgy when he spoke to Gojo, you know? <laughs> So I was just thinking, you know what, this guy's edgy, but he's not an edge lord. And that kind of threw me into a loop. It made me reconsider my entire understanding of what an edge lord is. And so I took the time to research. I wanted to know what an edge lord was and who are edge lords that I could refer to when further prescribing that title to other characters I see in anime, manga, webtoons, movies, anything you know. And so here I am to present what I found from researching into the concept of an edge lord, so that you understand what an edge lord is and what types of edge lords exist in media. And if you have time afterwards, go read Abony's army. She's waiting for you. Abony is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So first, I looked through different definitions of an edge lord. The word edge lord came into fruition in the twenty first century. So edge meaning a quality or factor which gives superiority over close rivals, and so a warlord or slumlord, so someone who's ruling, who is in charge. You are in charge of feeling superior over other people. This is something that's in your being, basically. But if we go further onto more urban dictionary kind of definitions of edgelord, I kept seeing a lot of terms. These are, of course, talking about internet edgelords. So edgelords who are online. So words like cool, controversial, nihilistic, offend, shock, wants admiration, dwelling on negative experiences, and the internet. So this kind of definition of edgelord is more focused on people who are going online and making those meme compilations or whatever about like the most edgy jokes. And the most, I suppose, nihilistic, controversial takes that you could have. That's kind of what you would call a more internet edgelord. But then I was sitting with my brother yesterday. He was telling me about a game. He was helping me play because I'm a little damsel in distress and I need help playing. No, he just knows the game. And he mentioned to me something very crucial that I honestly couldn't even believe that I'd forgotten. And that is a third crucial definition that we need to know. The first one is just word by word. Second one is about internet. But what is more specific about an edgelord? What encompasses the understanding of an edgelord almost perfectly? is a chunibyo. And for those who think you don't know uh, about chunibyos, if you watch anime, you actually do. And if you haven't seen many animes or anything, you just read or you just watch stuff that is an anime, live action stuff, then I'll tell you now. Chunibyo basically is middle second syndrome. So that stands for middle grader second year. But in the US apparently, um, I don't know, I don't live in the lands of the guns, call it eighth grader syndrome. And in the UK we would call it eighth year students, I guess, syndrome. Eighth grader syndrome, that's what I know it as and that's what it's usually translated to in the subtitles. This syndrome is very crucial to understanding what an edge lord is. It is the imp like it is one of the best definitions you could ever use. And let me just read it for you. So a chunibyo is a teen who has grandose delusions, who desperately wants to stand out and have convinced themselves that they have hidden knowledge or secret powers. That is what a chunibyo is. And that is very, very close to what I think of an edgelord. But I don't want to just take one of these definitions, I want to combine them so that we can have a working definition for the rest of this video, for the types. So let me just tell you what I came up with. My definition of an edgelord is a typically nihilistic character that is intentionally written to do or say controversial, shocking or pretentious things to seem cool. So it's a character that the writer writes to make you think, oh, they're edgy, they're cool. 
right? Because while certain edgelords, like I will talk about later, seem quite fun, like the Trinivios, they are just a little aspect of what a uh, actual edgy character is. I feel like that is a bit too narrow. And so this is why I think this definition works better because the nihilism adds to it. I did say typically nihilistic, doesn't mean exclusively nihilistic, but I think the nihilism really makes it more, more edgy. It makes them really the lord of the edge. <laughs> I should have wore something with triangles on them. God damn it, missed opportunity. You may be familiar with me, you may not be familiar with me. I love psychology, I'm a psychology graduate. And I looked into the psychological aspect of a nihilistic character. What makes a nihilistic character? Why would you write as a nihilistic character? I wanted to just check, you know, if there's anything to add to the definition of an edgelord by looking through psychological studies. And I did find a study talking about Fight Club. I haven't seen or read, because in this case it's talking about the novel in 1996. This study does discuss something in it, which I think does apply. It talks about how how the narrator in the Fight Club novel escaped from existential nihilism. But to be fair, it was not applicable enough. It wasn't really about edge laws, it was just about someone who found there was a lack of meaning in life, which is what nihilism means. Sorry if you had to Google it, I just realized. But yeah, it doesn't talk about what it edgelord is and it doesn't talk about the different types of edgelords. So there wasn't really much I could use from that. It, all it gave me was a bit of comfort that somebody, some psychologist is studying, uh, I guess, nihilistic characters. And perhaps this might prompt somebody to conduct, you know, more of a study. I, know, I doubt it. I, I feel like there's literally not a single person watching who cares about psychology enough. But you know, funny fund me yeah just pay me I'll, I'll do the study i'll write the study i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it i promise i'll do it i'll do it so in light of this lack of psychological studies may as well adapt overcome arise appear soar over this inconvenience and focus on assessing different types of edge laws that i see in media putting them into their own categories and see if my definition still holds up Oh, that's the main part of the video. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Let's ready to rumble. Go, go, go. So the types. I'm going to use examples to show you what types of, of edgelords exist in media according to me and what I found. And we need to bear in mind that all of these examples have to be nihilistic. They have to do shocking things. Appear pretentious as well. Appear cool, dark, mysterious. Those kind of things need to apply to them so that they see seem cool visually at the very least because that's what the writer's goal is to make them cool that's i guess my key uh for each of these types number one is a classic a hood tradition you couldn't get me to talk about edgelords without bringing up the man the myth the legend uchiha sasuke sasuke uchiha from naruto the anime the mo movies the manga, I meant to say manga first, but yeah, the movies, which had a, uh, apparently they're more important than the manga. Yes, Sasuke Uchiha. He is a classic edgelord and he defines what classic edgelord is. Maybe there are some other people from, I heard maybe Code Geass, I haven't seen it. I saw like one episode, but I know from what my experience of watching media is, Sasuke Uchiha is the Except literally Batman. I mean, if we wanted to just start from the outside in, he seems cool. I mean, first, ding, dang, ding, dang, dang. <laughs> the music that they play, his soundtrack is so funny and it's cool. It's like a guitar riff, basically. His hair swept back, his vibe, his chidori, bro. He got cool moves. He's got his Sharon guns and he's got his skeleton shield thing. Most things about his character design and the music played around him is cool. I'm sure anybody who doesn't know Sasuke will think he seems cool. He's also nihilistic. He's got the big N. He's nihilistic. He hated Itachi. He ran from the village. He left Naruto. He had that big fight. They scrapped. He left. He went to see Akasuki. He went with Odochimaru. He just completely felt like life was meaningless, but he wants to hate everything. You know, stuff like that. It makes him a nihilistic character. I'm sure there's better examples, but those are the ones that came to mind when I was writing this video. And then shocking, because I feel like the shocking is maybe not thought about, because the edgelord can't just be an edgelord and be like, oh chill, like, you know, 
oh yeah life is meaningless and and something pretentious and basic uh, i don't care about anything they have to be a bit shocking i think honestly i think that's a really crucial thing i know that the shocking aspect of it is more so uh, something that's associated with internet edgelords but I really think that to a certain degree, characters that are written as Edgelords also do shocking things. And for Sasuke, it was wanting to be the Hokage, Jesus Christ. Or it was trying to kill people, you know, all these kind of things make him a true Lord of Edge, you know. If he was just like, I don't know, yeah, Jason, Jason Todd, my favourite Robin, maybe probably okay just to clarify dick is actually the best robin damien is the funniest robin jason is the coolest robin stephanie is the most relatable robin and tim is the smartest robin like i like all of them but i'm just saying that as a character jason outside of being robin is my favorite robin <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't think I'd actually be able to speak about this in a video because I was just talking about like Asian fiction and I've been obsessed with DC. Bat Family, Bat Family is the love of my life. I just love platonic Bat Family. Anyways, Jason Todd, for instance, very emo, very sad. He acted on his emo-ness. He is technically, you could also call him kind of a classic edgelord as well as Sasuke is, right? But he acted on his stuff. The same way Sasuke acted. If he, if neither of them acted on their actual edgelord stuff and they weren't doing shocking things that made you think, oh, what the hell? You wouldn't, maybe, I don't think you would think or people would see them as edgelords. You'd more see them as like people who just talk nonsense, right? And they wouldn't be annoying like edgelords are. The reason that edgelords are so edgy and you see them as edgy rather than cool is because they do annoying things they do shocking things they make you think oh god it's such an edgelord right it's not a compliment but there's argument there there's an argument there you could argue either way my definition is not strict so if you guys want to edit it in the comments Dope. i'm completely fine with that but for the sake of this video yes the shocking aspect for me has to be there i think so yeah first was classic sasuke second is a newcomer you know it's somebody who has taken a world by storm you know another anime one that came recently it's a contemporary one it's sid from eminence in the shadow the main character he has everything an edgelord needs i mean if we're gonna compare sasuke to anyone it would be him he looks cool he sounds cool the music <laughs> Are we gonna talk about I um everything about this guy seems cool. But the coolness is just on the outside. Realistically on the inside, he's just a nihilistic, controversial, I suppose, immoral, pretentious character. Who I mean I like him, kind of. I also like Sasuke a lot, but they are not likeable in many situations and for many reasons. Sid makes unnecessary sacrifices. He sacrifices so many people, so many things in his own life. Even in his life when he, before he became an isekai protagonist, he wanted to train so that he could, what was it, be the strongest or be able to defend himself, get the closest he could get to power in his life. He was kind of like a chunibyo but with actual serious depressing sides to him and not humorous sides in that way questions the meaning of life why am i here what's what what are these lives meaning he thinks of everybody as side characters and in retrospect he isn't wrong they are side characters to his story but for him to actually think that within the story shows a level of edginess i suppose and pretentiousness that kind of is a bit annoying it's an edgelord kind of way of thinking it's a nihilistic way of thinking and then when we're talking about the shocking controversial side of being an edgelord we're talking about the fact that he manipulates vulnerable people he does shocking things he makes an army of of what are they orphans of people with not much going on in their life to serve as the underbelly of the city not in a sense of that he's doing crime in the sense of like he's trying to make drugs or be violent and stuff he's got some kind of cause to defeat some kind of evil but you know he is just not the most ethically morally correct character and that contributes to why i Do think he is a primary beautiful example of a contemporary 
edgelord. So then after classic, after contemporary, what other ways can we change and categorize different types of edgelords? Well, we've got comedy. Chunibyo is, like I said, the definition of edgelord for many people. However, Chunibyo is not the only way that comedy manifests in edgelords. Firstly, I want to talk about an intentionally comedic edgelord. So this is an edgelord who is written intentionally to be funny. The nihilism, the shockingness, all of these things are supposed to be funny and not supposed to be cool in the same way and the same pure way that Sasuke or Sid or Jason, for instance, are supposed to be cool. And who better? Who better to show that coolness, that intentionally humorous coolness than Seiya from Cautious Hero, the Cautious Hero. It's a comedy isekai anime and it really does capture what an edgelord that is intentionally written to be funny would look like. First of all, he's cool. The way he speaks, his voice actor, first and foremost, his voice actor has such a cool voice. <laughs> His voice is like metal, like something so rustic, you know, metallic is what I would use to describe his, his voice actor's voice. That kind of stuff really is that thunder. Just like thunder outside, yes, it rumbles me. It makes me feel comforted in the way that it's deep and low and that his, his, his tone and his personality is quite stable, I suppose, but is also so emotionless in many ways that you're questioning things. You're questioning, is it gonna rain outside? I'm making the most stupid link um, I could think of. And his aesthetic, his abs, you know, the way he develops himself, the way he holds himself and his kind of personality as well he's very serious one track minded i'm gonna be training and pushing and doing all that stuff making us all feel ashamed for not going to the gym the angles as well the camera angles things like that also add to his coolness i will say too you know when he's being shown on screen and they, what's her name the gods she's really funny uh she's like gasping over him that also adds to his coolness visually on the outside on the outside only right but is he nihilistic and shocking yes he is obviously obviously he is the nihilism, I think, comes early on. Um, I'm trying not to spoil all these animes and shows and whatever, because I guess this is, yeah, this is a, a third anime in the list. You know, this is, they, they all have mangas and light novels. It's, it's all media, basically. I'm just using the stuff that I've watched as anime, even though they exist in other formats as well. This character in many formats is nihilistic, especially when he doesn't want sidekicks. It's quite an early on thing. He doesn't want to have people supporting him because he doesn't really believe Believe in them he doesn't think that there's a meaning in doing it he's questioning why am i the hero what's the point of fighting here he has some empathy but you question sometimes whether he actually cares enough about anything that's happening all he showed was frustration at being iskai which is such a great plot point because you know why wouldn't you be frustrated why wouldn't you be like oh why have i been iskai to serve you you know he shows a realistic take but he doesn't actually care about anything around him because of that and so it kind of gives him this dead nihilistic kind of tone it makes him seem a bit pretentious and then he does shocking things i mean again because it is an intentionally comedic edgelord his shocking things end up being a bit more funny and less cruel i would say you know his biggest shocking thing which is the whole point the whole premise is his cautiousness with villains he is overly cautious he's so overly worried about his own well-being that he seems like not like other guys he does shocking things like continuously blasting a villain to make sure that they completely been wiped from the planet and that adds a bit to his edginess so yes the intentionally comedic edgelord is a bit less of the serious one of course because it's supposed to be funny and it's a bit more focusing on the whole idea of itself and kind of playing on it there's a lot of times where they play on the idea that he's very dark and dim and edgy but make it funny so it's like one of the edges of edgelord if i was to say the classic and Do the contemporary are in the middle then an intentionally comedic would be a bit on the right or the left just just not as far into the core of what an edgelord should be and what they are but still close enough that it is within the premise definition of what an edgelord is i'm sure you're wondering after classic edgelords after contemporary edgelords then we have intentionally comedic edgelords what could come next well I'm sure this comes as no surprise unintentionally comedic 
edge lords. Sasuke could be seen as unintentionally comedic, so could Sid uh, and not necessarily Seiya because that's intentional, it's a comedy anime, right? But not as much as the next character I'm gonna bring up and that character is very famous. Him and his story defined a genre of media that comes out now as daily, weekly slot for every consumer of this piece of media. I am talking about Sung Jin Woo from Solo Leveling. It's a manhwa character and this manhwa character is the pin point the forefather of overpowered protagonist ranking lit rpg manhwas that exist today not contemporary it ended a few years back whereas eminence in the shadow is still airing as an anime now but very very relevant and very 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 unintentionally funny especially near the end of the manhwa obviously again if you have a better example tell me but i really do think he is sung jimu is a great example of an unintentionally funny edgelord so why is he an unintentionally comedic edgelord? Well, first of all, he is edgy. I mean, again, camera angles, we're talking about the angles of the panel, we're talking about his aesthetic, you know, the clothes he wears. There's no music or anything or voice acts because this is a comic that we're talking about, even though there might be an anime soon. But that means there's more focus on the outfits, there's more focus on the purple outline around his body, stuff like that that people have mentioned. We're talking about how people react when they see him and they talk to him, you know, <gasps> Sun Jin Woo, you know, it's kind of a little, wow, he's cool cool right on the outside he seems cool so what parts of him feel nihilistic what makes you think oh he doesn't really care about anything does he he doesn't care about life he doesn't have any beliefs you know well after like 50 chapters in he has no one he cares about and we have this kind of thing later on i i, I don't want to spoil again too much but there's this thing where he needs to save someone that he cares about but from the lack of development of his relationships, his, his, his uh, people he likes, he doesn't have anyone he really likes and we haven't gotten any touching moments really with characters and him since, like I said, around 50 or something chapters in. And that really takes away from how much it seems he cares about other people and things around him because he's so low leveling. He's mentioned it before in the thing multiple times. It's about me. It's about being alone. I am alone. I'm doing this alone. I have an army. I don't care. I'm not talking to people. It, it, he has this kind of attitude that alienates other people as well as the fact that he just almost seems like he can't make any meaningful, interesting relationships with other people. But of course I understand, it's called solo leveling for a reason, but that kind of thing takes away from his humanity and makes him seem nihilistic, at least to me. So the shocking things tend to be him caring about anything and him facing a very big threat alone. I mean, it's been a while. If you want to skip, skip five seconds. Skip to this point. But yes, facing the ants alone, the most dangerous characters in the manhwa for a while. And then his emotions, you know, he shows emotions like when he sees his dad and everything and he cries. I literally was like, he's crying? He has emotions? For me, those were the shocking things. He's doing these things like he's the guy, he's the G, he's, you know, amazing. And it makes him seem a bit edgy compared to other normal characters who are just not as outlandish and not as strange, I suppose, in certain ways as he is or detached as he he can be and so yeah that's why i just call him the edgelord of manhwa he is probably Ooh. the first person i would ever think of when i was thinking of edgelords and manhwas you could also argue the protagonist guy from omniscient reader what's his name jung hyuk jung hyuk could also be almost as edgy as sung jin woo the writer seems to intentionally be writing his scenes to be funny so i don't think that jung hyuk would be a good example of unintentionally comedic like Sung Jin Woo is because Sung Jin Woo isn't supposed to be funny but Jung Hyuk is clearly supposed to be funny. I mean, the guy fell asleep standing up. It's funny. Like, they know, the writer knows it's funny. It's, it's an intentional joke. And obviously I can't replace Seiya from Cautious Hero with Jong Hyuk because Cautious Hero is literally a comedy. So that category as intentionally comedic has to be a comedy, right? I, I feel like it has to be a comedy show. And so yeah, Jong Hyuk is kind of just like, maybe contemporary edgelord I'd put him in. I feel like, yeah, I'd put him in a contemporary edgelord for now, for now, for now, because we have a few more categories and we'll see where we can put Jong Hyuk by the end. Yeah, let's make that a little challenge. Let's make it so that we try to put Jong Hyuk somewhere by the end of the video. And if we can't, then I have completely messed it up. And these categories don't work. These types don't work. <laughs> and I'm literally showing you within the video. You don't even have to comment. I've already destroyed my own video during the video. So for the fifth 
life type. I wanted to challenge myself to think of something outside of anime and outside of a webcomic because that's mostly what I consume. I did reference Batman and Jason Todd, Robin or Red Hood, but I did find something for Elf. the next category. I did, I found something Elf. for the next type that works, that isn't an anime character and that isn't a manhua character and something well known. So you undoubtedly know him and if you don't, then what are you doing? This character has a big ego. This character and this type is around egos. It's around being arrogant. It's the arrogant edgelord. And for this type, who better to represent it than Syndrome from The Incredibles? I'm sure there is better people, but we're talking edgelords. We're not talking about who better for the arrogant character. We're talking about arrogant edgelords and arrogant edgelords wise syndrome is a very good arrogant edgelord thank you so let's start from the beginning from the outside in like we usually do is syndrome perceived as cool it's arguable this is one of the only things that i'm like questioning because he is supposed to be a villain right and so most people most viewers don't root for the villain they don't find the villain to seem cool they don't genuinely think a villain looks cool his outfit is nice his technology is cool when he properly shows you at the end when he you know fabricates the whole attack on the city he shows these whole new different technology but then he seems lame because he doesn't know what he's doing and then the incredible save the day so he does seem cool kind of especially with all the the buildings and the technology he had when he was keeping Mr. Incredible kidnapped and everything. It looks great and the whole like flashing of the whole world, you know, Professor X kind of flashing, you know, Cerebro looking ass, right? That whole room was really cool, but because he's kind of lame and the whole point is he, he doesn't save the day, it, it's not, he's not like the most coolest of edgelords, I will say. But I think that that doesn't matter because I think he has enough edge, he has enough technology, enough money to seem cool enough to seem like an edgelord. But his nihilism and his shocking tendencies and shocking behavior make him even more like an edgelord, enough for me to call him an edgelord according to my own standards. What is he nihilistic about? What does he hate the world for? You know, clearly he thinks that life is expendable. The way that he's attacking the cities, the way that he's talking about heroes, about, about civilians, stuff like that, how nobody loved him, nobody cared. He thinks to a degree that human life is meaningless and that pursuing a normal civilian life is not worth anything. He also wants to get rid of the Incredibles because he lost his love for being a hero after being rejected by his idolized hero you know mr incredible he was supposed to be his sidekick he, he wanted to be with him right but he wasn't able to and that made him feel empty inside and i think that's enough to say that he's a bit nihilistic i do think that that's that's yeah that's enough and then his shocking thing the thing that he did that was shocking he fabricates this whole attack on the city which destroys everything in its path and has to be saved and rescued by the incredibles who he literally just tried to put away it is shockingly lame but that's what makes him an edgelord an arrogant edgelord a not likable edgelord there's nothing really funny or charismatic there's no you know comedy in it really it's kind of just pathetic that's the kind of edgelord that he is and I think it's a necessary evil it's a necessary opposite end of the spectrum you know I suppose the more you laugh when you see an edgelord the more you like them in a way which makes your comedy to be likable the comedic edgelords are likable whereas the arrogant edgelords which just give you nothing but like oh why are you so overly confident they're unlikable so you know we have the contemporary we have the classic and we Don't have the likable uh, unintentionally and intentionally comedic and we have the unlikable arrogant edgelords and then there is one more spectrum that we need to cover that i found when thinking about examples and it's it's yeah it's very interesting I, let, let's get to it so this next category the sixth category the penultimate category is very very interesting like i said the other ones but this one is particularly interesting it differs again from the other types it's quite specific quite a niche kind of edgelord that i think really does need to be talked about and this edgelord this category this type is dangerous it's something that you don't want to see someone who is not 
even just arrogant and that's not even a part of what is is different about it what's different is that this edgelord is violent that yes they act on their stuff but they're not just acting to seem cool to be written as shocking they are genuinely dangerous people they are psychotic because that is what this type is called psychotic edgelord and i literally could not have found a better this one is not arguable i'm not even going to argue with anybody on this one i could not have found a better example for this kind of psychotic type edgelord than eren jaeger the man the myth eren from Attack on Titan, Shinjiki no Kyoto. He appears in, a, is it, did they have a light novel? I think so. They made a prequel light novel after the anime and manga like popped off. Manga, manga, anime, live action as a psychotic edgelord. And I'm here for it. So why would I pick Eren? And what does this have to do with edgelords being psychotic? Is that really something that's necessary as a, as a descriptor for an edgelord? Yes, because not every edgelord is psychotic and not every psychotic person is an edgelord, but there often are a slew of characters like Eren who are edgelords that take it too far. And that's what I want to talk about. So with Eren specifically on the outside, how is Eren edgy? Well, we've got his voice actor. I mean, of course, Aaron exists in many different mediums, so it's not exactly fair to say this, but I will because it's very important. Just like that metallic thunderclap from before, just like something very thick and gravelly, but not exactly gravelly, more so deep and dangerous and, and sad and traumatized. Aaron's voice actor, Kajiyuki, I, he's my probably my favorite male voice actor of all time except for maybe kevin conroy rip batman's voice actor like the ma the main batman voice he's amazing as well but in terms of kajiyuki he literally puts on a performance of his lifetime every single time i hear Aaron speak <laughs> I haven't watched the latest, 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 latest two episodes, I believe it is, after a lot happens, and I won't spoil, because uh, spoiling so leveling is one thing, but spoiling Attack on Titan is, that would just ruin the experience for you, so I won't even chance a spoiler for that, but something happens, big things happen, bigger, bigger, bigger things happen, over it just gets bigger and bigger, but even then, even if I haven't seen those, like last, last final season, whatever the thing it is, I've seen like up to season four, second part i think whatever and his voice is just consistently amazing and edgy and cool it sounds fucking cool bro his voice is cool and he looks cool he has different hair is what i'll say in in other forms uh he looks even cooler uh i don't i don't want to spoil uh, he looks really cool. <laughs> he has a great aesthetic. You know, we love green and, and brown. We love that kind of aesthetic. It's really nice to see, aesthetically pleasing. So yeah, there's nothing much more. He's he's a cool character. He it motivates us. He might seem whiny in many ways, but he's also very determined in ways that none of us could be ever that determined. Like, I don't think any of us would ever care so much about anything <laughs> to be this determined about something. But he is, and that is cool on the outside. And on the inside, yeah, I will say later on he becomes very nihilistic. Well, we don't even have to talk about season four and season five or season four point part two, where he becomes extremely nihilistic. We can just talk about season three. In season three, he has a famous line, which isn't really spoilers at all, so don't worry. It's Nanimo Kawata or something. I can't remember the actual name. Nanimo! Nanimo Kawata! But he says nothing's changed right? He says nothing has changed and he's screaming. Kajiyuki is screaming that nothing has changed in his life, in everything. The meaning, he, 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 it, it shows his breaking point in that part of the show. It feels like all his work and effort has come to nothing, right? And it's a crucial part of when I think he seems nihilistic. But then we also have the shockingness. Again, we don't need to really talk about Eren being shocking. He's shocking all the time. All the plot twist centers around him is shocking. His abilities, his big headedness, his backstory, so yes, uh, Eren is edgy. <laughs> He's an edgy guy. He's also nihilistic, does many shocking things, Don't. and he's more on the psychotic side. You know, with Sasuke, he grew out of it, right? He's sitting down, eating his 
stuff. If he wasn't so classic, I'd maybe put him on a bit more of the psychotic side. But the fact that he turned things around in the war, in the Great Ninja War, is it fifth? I don't remember. Something Great Ninja War shows that he wasn't actually completely going off the deep end because he always brought it back. He was just very troubled and was able to turn things around after a while and the contemporary one that i used sid uh psychotic you could argue too but compared to sasuke and sid who are in touch with reality arguably eren is just not he's just not he's too traumatized for that he's just too too traumatized for that sasuke isn't in touch with reality in the beginning but he becomes in touch with reality uh during the ninja war whereas Eren is <laughs> nowhere near he's getting worse in fact where sasuke got better <laughs> Uh, so yes, arguably I say that Eren is a bit more on the psychotic side, he's more on the violent side, I would say, you know, something that's a bit more chaotic, you know, that's kind of what Eren is supposed to represent, the more chaotic, extreme, crossing every line imaginable, never coming back or recovering. Now, we have the classic, we have the contemporary, we have the unintentionally comedic, we have the intentionally comedic, then we have the arrogant and we have the psychotic. But arrogant and psychotic aren't opposite ends of the spectrum. Arrogant is, I suppose, an attitude focusing on the edgelord being a bad, unlikable character, whereas psychotic focuses on the character being dangerous. And if there is a type for a dangerous edgelord, then how could we, in this video, not finish off by talking about a harmless edgelord. An edgelord without attitude problems, an edgelord who isn't classic of anything, isn't very contemporary, isn't unintentionally uh, comedic, isn't the pinnacle of intentionally comedic, I mean kind of is but not entirely, and isn't psychotic, isn't completely violent. Well let's go back to what the crucial definition that most people see an edgelord to be, a chunibyo. And who is the number one chunibyo of all kind? Megamin from Konosuba. Megamin from Konosuba. That is who I've put as harmless. To be honest, Kaido from Psyche K, who is nihilistic, he seems cool sometimes, does shocking things, is technically a better example. Plus, he represents Chunibyo's a bit better because he actually is harmless, whereas she has some power, it's just she doesn't use it to harm, and she wouldn't use it to harm unless there was a real reason. I wanted to just make my life harder. Anyways, back to Megamin. I would very easily put her in intentionally comedic because Konosuba is a comedy. However, I wanted to make the distinction between harmlessness with Seiya and Megumin. So, Seiya is not harmless. He is overpowered as hell. He is a machine. He is very powerful and very responsible for the outcome of the world. He is in the hardest world possible. And thus, I felt like he couldn't be put in the harmless category. So, while Seiya cannot be classified as a harmless edgelord, Megumin could easily and is in both types of edgelords. She is intentionally comedic and she is harmless, but I wanted to put her in harmless just to talk about a different aspect of her character that isn't perhaps as well thought about because of course we have the intentionally comedic she is hilarious you know she does all these things but she is also a harmless edgelord and let me explain why so she's cool on the outside she has a lovely aesthetic but not in a way that's scary you know her aesthetic doesn't make you feel oh wow she's gonna hurt me unlike Seiya who is intentionally comedic as well he is harmful he is dangerous right he looks scary he is a more cool character but Megumin's aesthetic is it's not the cool in the way of, of danger it's or it's cool in the way of aesthetically pleasing you know it looks nice it makes me think oh she looks nice right rather than like she looks sick yo the music is fun and quite dramatic Except it all! Besides, she's not really nihilistic. She gets nihilistic when she can't do an explosion, but she has meaning. She wants to follow Kazuma and Aqua and Darkness and help them. She wants to embody explosion magic, conduct it. She, she feels like her life is fulfilled every time she does explosion magic. And that shows that she likes being alive and she likes doing things. She likes her existence. So 
she isn't nihilistic exactly and she is shocking you know the way that she drops after doing the explosion magic that is shocking to anybody <laughs> But unlike Seiya, her shocking actions aren't violent. There's something in a conversation that she messes up. There's something in a task that she can't do. None of her shocking actions or nihilistic thoughts or her pretentiousness is of any violent nature, even though her powers are dangerous, if you understand what I'm saying. But how could we say that Megumi is not? you know, the edgelord, you know, the Chunibyo. It makes me realise that Chunibyo, like we said before, isn't what I would classify as the definition of an edgelord, but it falls on the very edge of the definition or the concept. I think even though she isn't nihilistic, really, even though she does slightly shocking things and her outfit is more aesthetic than cool, she is Don't. still edgy. You know, she is the not like other girls of anime in many ways and she she is just so edgy and so instead of trying to mope around and think what in the definition isn't working for megamin to not fully fit in as a concept instead of me just tweaking it at the very end and just trying to tighten it up i'm gonna use jonghyuk if you remember from before i think his surname is your jonghyuk i suddenly remember the surname i don't know why jonghyuk is a good tester he is edgy without a shadow of a doubt you read him in omniscient reader and you just know he's edgy you don't know what the definition of edgelord is but you know when you see jonghyuk in the comic he is just an edgy guy so let's see if he fits and if he doesn't fit then you just watch the video with no conclusion. <laughs> and if he does fit, or to a degree, if he fits to a degree, then we can see if we can make any adjustments and finalize this concept. Let me think. Let me think. Let's go in chronological order. So, classic. He's not classic. Edgelord. We know that. We know that he's not classic. There's, there's nothing classic about him. He's someone who's been written later on after all the classic Edgelords have been written and it's not classic. He could arguably be contemporary, you know, because Omniscient Reader is still coming out and he is in a genre which is still quite new, lit RPG, you know, it's a very fresh, well maybe not fresh, but it's, it is contemporary as a genre, right? It's a new-ish genre of the 21st century. And when we have unintentionally funny, he isn't unintentionally funny. Like I said before, he's more intentionally funny because the writer writes him like that. Then we have Arrogant. Arrogant is arguably correct as well because arrogance uh, emphasizes his attitude problems. You know, Doc Jack always struggles to uh, rein him in and control the guy. Uh, Doc is the main character, if you didn't know. And then uh, after Arrogance, uh, we have Psychotic, which could work. Ha harmlessness isn't gonna work because he's not harmless. He's one of the strongest characters, if not the strongest character. But, I mean, there's a, a new arc, if you guys have caught up, you, you know about the strongest character. But yes, he is very strong, right? So he's not harmless. So we're really thinking about three categories. We're thinking about contemporary edgelord. Is he a contemporary edgelord? Is that what I'd say the primary part of him is? Is he arrogant edgelord because his attitude problems and he, the fact that he's quite annoying, right? He's quite frustrating. Or would I classify him as a more as a psychotic edgelord? Someone who can't be reasoned with, you know, the many times that he is hurt, I guess, doctor or gone crazy and stuff would make him arguably a psychotic edgelord. And so if we go down from that, I can take off psychotic because now that I thought about it, the same reasoning that I used for Sasuke to not be classified as a psychotic edgelord, which was that Sasuke redeems himself, can be said for Jonghyuk. Jonghyuk starts to help Doctor, he starts to see him as an ally later on, so thus I wouldn't classify him as, as psychotic, he doesn't get worse as the time passes, he gets better and more tolerable as a character. Which then makes me consider whether I want to prioritise him as an arrogant character or a contemporary edgelord. You know, if we're thinking about what makes him edgy, the nihilistic stuff, you know, the fact that he's regressing, he has different lives basically, and that's not even a spoiler, it's something very well known. 
and it makes him very nihilistic he doesn't know about what matters right what matters in life and then after nihilistic we have the shocking stuff like him sleeping when he's standing up or him being so strong and defeating all these enemies and risking his life so in that case i might more classify him as contemporary because with arrogant as an arrogant edgelord it doesn't feel like he works you know what i mean like i feel like he's too nice like he gets better you learn more about him you sympathize with him he's not a villain because i think that's what an arrogant edgelord is as someone who's defined by the fact that they're so annoying they're villainous right because the rest of these edgelords are more like anti-heroes or what's the other one good hit villains i can't <laughs> anti-hero and the other one where the villain is got good intention or sympathetic villains you know whereas an actual villain like syndrome the only villain on the list is absolutely more arrogant and isn't redeeming in the other characters ways so i think yeah i can't put him with syndrome who is a villain because he does redeem himself we we, we sympathize with him so ultimately jung yuk falls in the contemporary <laughs> edgelord he is a contemporary edgelord and with that thank god the video has purpose oh boy i've been recording for almost an hour and a half wow <laughs> this video is gonna be long i'm happy you watched it all the way through because i don't know how long it's gonna take me to edit oh my god but i'll try to oh my god <laughs> i hate myself in conclusion the takeaways Edgelords are hard to define. My definition works for me, pretty much. I think it does. But, you know, if you want to go by Tunivio, if you want to go by the Urban Dictionary one, which talks about internet edgelords, if you want to go by a psychological one, which I didn't even get into, or other things, then feel free. But this definition works for me. And um, I think I'm going to use it. And then these types, I think they work. Because I actually didn't think that I'd be able to put Jung Hooks anywhere, but I was able to put him somewhere. And for me, that means that other characters, including the examples that I, I gave you, can fit somewhere in these types. And thus, they function well as categories of edgelords or types of edgelords or the same, same thing. I'm just using different words for no reason. And then the last thing I wanted to say is that I think that edgelords all deserve a theme tune. Like Sasuke's, you know. Ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> I think all edgelords deserve a theme tune. And uh, if I am to be nominated as the queen of edgelords, you know, after making this long as hell video, I will pass that along as my first decree. Edgelords must have theme songs because the aesthetics might be great, but they need, I'm telling you this now, they need a theme song. It makes it better. And I think that a theme song is what really ties every edgelord together. That's your takeaway, right? That's your primary takeaway. If wanna do one thing and subscribe please this video took so long to make to subscribe If you want to watch another video you know you've got psychology of fiction playlists other things other videos just check my channel like you know and uh then i say a quirky goodbye jane matane annyeong please i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done this is well over eight minutes <laughs> well, i thought this was gonna be eight minutes you know that right? i thought that this video was gonna end up to be eight